به سر شوق سر کوی تدی را نازنی به سر شوق سر کوی تدی را نازنی به دل مهر مه روی تدی را نازنی بوت من کبه من قبله من آی بوت من کبه من قبله من هر سو نظر سوی تدیرم نازنی Long story. Uh, I'm, I was uh, like um, ten years old, and I'm from Iran, obviously from Tehran. And when I was ten years old, revolution happened in Iran, 1979. So uh, we had like a monarchy system, king and queen, uh, Pahlavi in Iran. So Islamic regime, regime took over the country in 1979, and our monarchy uh, had to escape the country. They went on exile, to exile. So uh, then, from then, a lot of Iran start changing. You know, we, a lot of Iranians start escaping the country uh, for, for religion problems, uh, political problems. So I was, I was my, in my case, I was only um, actually when when I had to escape, I was 17 years old. So I had to do army uh, service, which is compulsory in, in Iran. And uh, I escaped, um, uh, we paid the smugglers, I escaped, they took me from uh, Pakistan, uh, Iran into Pakistan. It took us about two, three days walking and driving. So we got, I got into Pakistan after, and I had to stay there for two years. Then I got, um, I was successful to come to Australia. And I came to Perth first time and I fell in love with it. It's a beautiful city. Nice weather, as you know. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and what brought you to Perth then? I mean, how did you end up in Perth? Just uh, my ex-wife was here. So she, uh, her family were here. So we came here first. And then um, obviously we liked the place we stayed. You know? Yeah. It is a lovely place. It is. It is. So, um, yeah, in, in, in Iran, I don't know. It, in, back, before 1979, it was a beautiful place, very civilized, westernized. You know, Iran um, had a very good economy, um, and people were. Um, um, I remember, I was as a 10 years old child. I was. We were very happy. The country was. Nobody wanted to leave Iran. We used to leave Iran just as a tourist, go to France, to Germany, Sweden. You know, and came back after two, three weeks. It was like a holidays. But since the, this regime took over, there's no, obviously, human rights in Iran. There's no animal rights, no religion rights. So, uh, basically, what Iranian Shia government wants, it's, it's either their way or no way. It, so, so the, the, the political system there is mm. obviously a totalitarian system of mm. oppression. So very much, very much. So, 
explain to us, I mean, how, how was it growing up there mm. under that? During the Islamic regime, uh, countries slowly uh, got worse. I mean, uh, the economy-wise, job-wise, people, uh, freedom, everything obviously was getting worse and worse. And now after, f the regime is on for 40 years at the moment. Right. So after 40 years, the economy is really bad. We had 36 million people before 79. Everyone lives, you know, comfortably. Now we got 85 million, which is a lot of them from other most uh, Islamic country. They brought them into Iran to expand the Islamic system. So what Islamic regime does at the moment, they trying to, uh, you know, take over Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen. That's what they're doing now. To the aim is to destroy Israel. That's what they're trying to do. So, uh, yeah. But before that, in Shah time, which our king was named Shah, which is uh, Shah means uh, king in Persian. So in Shah time, the Middle East was in peace. You know, uh, he was friend to Israel. He was friend to Saudi. He was even Iraq, Iraq. We had, we were in war with in with Iraq for eight years. I lost my brother in the same war. So uh, it just uh, as as the day Shah left. Actually, the day he was leaving the country, he said, "The day I leave, Iran is in trouble. The day Iran is in trouble, the Middle East gonna be in trouble. And when the Middle East in in, in problems have problems, the whole world's gonna be in trouble." And this is what we see after 40 years. Well, it's, it's shown it to is, be true. It is, yeah. very much so. Yeah. You know, now, now our queen is still alive. He's in, she's in France, I think, in Paris. And uh, her son, our, our prince, the oldest one, he's in the US. He's actually working with Mr. Trump at the moment to uh, bring peace and harmony back to Middle East, especially Iran. So, Talking about Trump, mm. is it is it greater support for President Trump within yeah, I the, believe the, so. the I expat believe so. community of the Iranian um, people? After forty years <clears throat> suffering, Iranian people, we were hoping, we were praying, we were you know just hoping someone like Trump comes and tell tell the truth to the world what's been happening to to Iranian by Iranian regime, and this has been happening up since he's been elected up. I've been really, really happy. And I know all my Iranian friends like Mr. Trump for what he's doing for Iranian freedoms. Right. You know, at the moment, people saw, people want, uh, you know, Trump wants to attack Iran. It's, I don't believe in news, which is Trump says the same thing, they're a bunch of lies. So what Trump is doing at the moment, he's giving option to Iranian regime. He said, "Come and negotiate. Sit on the, you know, negotiation negotiation table, and try to um, stop making whatever atomic bomb or whatever they're trying to make by Russians. That's uh, Russians are the biggest help to Iranian regime. That's why they're still there after 40 years. So um, he's saying, let's negotiate. But Iranian regime, they don't listen. They just, you know, want to go their way, and they obviously, and they're ruining my country." They're stealing our oil and gas. They're feeding the terrorists all around the world. They, yeah, all the all the terrorists. It's because see, when you look at Lebanon, you look at Afghanistan, all those countries, they have no wealth. They have no money as much as Iran does. So they're stealing our oil and gas, making money, and send it to the um, these terrorist group like Taliban, like Hamas, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon. Hezbollah is created by Iranian regime back in 80s, you know. So uh, they're sending all our money and people are suffering in Iran. You know, they have heard uh, more than 50% of Iranian population below po poverty. And that's shocking, you know, because Iran is fourth, I think, richest uh, country in the world. In terms of gas, we are number two. In, in terms of oil, we are number four. So why, why do we have to have uh, poverty, you know? Well, it should be. I mean, uh, that type yeah. of if you look at yeah. the the Gulf states. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with Libya, mm -hmm. they're all wealth. I mean, with Gaddafi, he mm -hmm. actually he spread the wealth mm -hmm. amongst. I mean, even though he lived a, a lavish lifestyle, but he did yeah. 
um, share the wealth. Yes, when yeah. they got married, they got a gift of yeah. um, so many thousands of dollars. And everybody got free education and health. Yes. His artesian water was, you know, I'm just talking about his wealth now through yeah. the oil, what he used. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he created a, a natural wonder of the world, which is the, the artesian water uh, yeah. supply chain. Yeah. And basically, the Iranian regime should be doing um, something yeah. like that. They should be investing in, in the yeah. people of Iran. Right? Iranian regime, they're not Iranians. No. They're not Persians. They, uh, if you go to our parliaments, there are four brothers leading the parliaments. They all they were all born in Iraq. They are all from Baghdad. They're not Iranians. So that's why right now, they for past 30, 40 years, they're sending money to Iraq. They making a temple, Islamic like a sh shrine by 18 karat gold in tons, and they send it to Iraq. They put them in Karbala. They put it in. You know where the uh, holy places are in Iraq, so they, they do not care about the Iranian people. You know, and after forty years, the young young generation of Iran, they are very smart, educated uh, people. So they, they, it's been proven to them that this regime is not doing good to Iranian people and for Iran. You know, we're not allowed to go to uh, you know to certain part of Iran to praise our Persian king, our Persian, you know, uh, heritage. So they banned us, even our Nowruz, which is a Persian New Year. When they come on TV in, in, in monarchy time, in before 1979, we got special custom for, uh, for you know, uh, doing our New Year. But the new regime, the leaders, they don't even do that. You know, they, they banned us to do certain things to, towards our Persian culture. So obviously, even, even, there's a lot of stupid, silly things happening in Iran now. You can, if I tell you a few things, you'll be shocked. A few years ago, the parliament approved, you can, if, if you adopt a, say, girl, adopt a girl as a, you know, infant, bring her home, raise her up, you're allowed to marry the child you adopted. So stepfather, like, I don't know what you call it, like a... A foster father. Foster father, father. allowed to marry <clears throat> his own child. That's sick. That makes me feel sick, you know. And we not, Iranians, we don't believe in that, you know. It, it makes us all sick, actually. So, but there was an uprising in Iran eight years ago called Green Movement. It was actually, yeah, and the leaders were actually belong to the regime themselves. But there was an uprise, people come on the street, all the students sh chanting, you know, freedom for Iran, freedom for this. And they brought terrorists from Lebanon, Iraq, Syria. They brought these people into Tehran, stabbing people, killing people, shooting people. So there was no success. And one thing sad me the most, I have to say that, European Union at the moment behind the Islamic regime because they dealing with Iranian regime they getting bargain on oil gas or whatever and they do not care about Iranian people especially countries like England like Germany like um, uh, France like uh, Canada like Sweden and these these people this country talk about freedom 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 for themselves but not for Iranian women Iranian women are suffering at the moment. You know, they're taking a scarf off and they say, we want freedom. We don't want this regime. We want our women's right. But uh, the only person, as I said before, the only person supporting us is, is Trump. And you know, so. Going back to Obama times. Mm. And it, the, yeah. the, the deal he did with Iran yeah. for the nuclear. Obama deal. was the worst thing happened to Iran. Obama was a fully supporter of the Iranian regime. Uh, before he left White House, he actually released billions of dollars to Iranian regime, so-called, you know, helping Iranian people, but all the money went to terrorists. So Obama somehow improved uh, terrorists around Middle East or all around the world. You know, so uh, you ask any, most Iranian, you mention Obama, they just, they go red. Okay. Because, you know, obviously he did, wrong by Iranians.
So, so yeah. with uh, President Trump um, mm. withdrawing from the deal, obviously he wants to make a new deal. Mm-hmm. Um, what what do you envisage envisage for yeah. uh, Iran now? Uh, if you Google it, Mr. Trump, uh, uh, you know, put 12 conditions for Iranian regime and he's open. He actually said, you can contact me. We come to negotiate negotiation table and we, we, we sort this out. You know, we help the Iranian people, the economy and everything. But Iranian regime just, they want to do it their own way. You know, it's, it's just, it's either, as I said, their way or no way. Right. So Trump is doing civilized, I think he's very civilized, he's doing what he's right for, because what, look at America now. You know, I work on the plane, and I talk to, I, I see Americans every day. I do a lot of international flight at the moment. And when Trump got voted in, people used to say, oh, we're not sure, you know, see what happens, you know, he just got, he just got in. But now I talk to American, as soon as I mention Trump, he say, yeah, go Trump because he's doing good for economy, he's, you know, whatever. I, in my time, I'm 50 years old, in my time, you always listen to politicians. They say things before they get in, then they change. They, they don't do what they promised. <laughs> Trump, Trump is the only, in my time, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not in love with Mr. Trump, but you gotta tell the truth. I think in my time, he's the only one who says things and he's stick to it and he's doing what he said. You, I, I, you know? I've got to agree with uh, what yeah. you're saying there. His, yeah. his campaign platform mm. is basically um, is what his, his platform is now. It's yeah. not changed. It's not altered. I yeah. mean, the wall, even Iran, he spoke about Iran before. Yeah. Um, in the campaign, he said it's a bad deal. Yeah. Um, so, mm. yeah, I've got to agree with you there. What he's actually said is, is he's, yeah. he's stuck by, you know. See, I, I used to help a lot of refugees. I used to, uh, people, refugee come out of camp. I used to take them to my house, you know, feed them, try to find a job, trying to find a place for them. So um, I was a big fan of bringing refugees, bringing refugees. But I think one thing Australian government did stop bringing any refugees right. because the one I know some they you know most of them they're doing okay they work in they got full-time job they pay the taxes they doing the good by society but some you know not doing good to, to you know like getting into drugs killing people you know doing that like a gang thing so I think not everyone come here are true refugees you know it's so more economic uh, uh, some actually belong to the Iranian regime. Some that I know right now, I, I've seen some actually. I've heard some. They, um, you know, uh, talking about Iranian regime. Oh, I told us are good. I told us this. You know, we are big fan. You know, whatever they say, we do it. So why obviously, are they why they here? <laughs> Yeah, why are they here? If, if they, if, if they attack, ah, it's always mm. in the right I, I know for a fact some got arrested before they get their PR. Right. Doing drugs, speeding, you know, you know whatever they, they were doing. They got arrested. They got it. They, they went to prison for six months, a year. Then they released. They're still here. And they have, they, I mean, some got citizenship PR after being out of prison. It's a joke. I don't get it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously you got that off your chest. I yeah. mean, so is there a big movement in the uh, in Australia mm-hmm. with the, the and, and globally yeah. with um, expat Iranian people, Persian, in, mm. let's say, living in the States, Australia, all over the world. Is there a big movement to tra- change the, the regime there? I, I believe a lot of Iranians believe right now what Trump is doing is putting sanctions on the regime and unfortunately people are suffering too. But the regime is suffering bad at the moment because they, they, they're trying to sell the oil. They used to sell 2.5 million barrels of oil a day. Now it's to 500. And even it's going to be zero very soon, within a few weeks' time, and Trump is cutting off the whole oil, so they can't sell any oil anymore. And now they actually 
doing um, uh, under the table. You know, they're selling oil with you know to Iraq and Syria and places like that, but off the table. You know, off the record. So that's what's happening right now. So I think uh, there are more people losing their jobs, thousands of factory closing down in Iran, and what makes me very upset. They don't show on news. I live in Australia. They don't show on TV here what's been happening in Iran because obviously they don't want the Iranian change, Iranian regime change. But uh, people of Iran, a protest in Iran every day. And yet they wanted mm. regime change in Iraq and Libya. Mm. You know what I mean? And they created that change. Yeah. But, you mm. know, you look at Iran, mm. that should have been a regime change 40 years ago. Yes. Just that shouldn't been have priority. come at all, you know, you know, because Shah, when Shah, our king, was in in Middle East, there was no war. Everyone lived in harmony and peace because he was a true Persian man. He was all about peace and harmony and you and know, yet the media, love. the media portrayed him as a dictator. Tyrant, a dictator. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I talk to people uh, on the plane and I say I'm from Iran, I like Shah, and they go Savak. Sawak was a security system in Iran. Any country has security system. Even Australia, you got AFP or whatever. Asia. You, Asia, you have to. Yeah. You need to protect your people, protect your country. Right. In Iran, there are a lot of people out of uniforms on the street. Thousands. They're all security people, security system. So um, anything you say, Next morning, they raid your home, take you to the prison. You don't know, you can be disappeared in a day. So it's like, obviously, you're talking about security uh, system. That's what the regime does to Iranian people. So 40 years ago, I mean, they, they talk about, you know, the, the regime change. Mm -hmm. And they changed the regime in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And they changed it in Libya. Mm -hmm. You know, and they changed them pretty darn quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but 40 years ago, they should have pushed for a regime change yeah. once the Islamic mm -hmm. State come in, yeah. uh, the, the, you know, of, See, of Iran. Iranian knows, the whole world knows now, Jimmy Carter was the master plan of revolution in Iran. They supported Ayatollah Khomeini. Uh, now they're talking CIA, they got evidence, like, you, you know, they, they funded Khomeini $20 million because then we had no Instagram, we had no Facebook, everything was tape, cassette, you know, cassette thing. So 20, I remember as a kid, the cassette, one cassette was in Tehran, people used to listen to the cassette, you know, from Khomeini because he was in exile by Shah in Paris, in, in, in France, North Le Chateau, that was the city he was in. So Jimmy Carter was a massive plan. He brought Iran, uh, Khomeini to Iran to get rid of Shah of Iran. Because Shah of Iran was challenging the US about the oil prices. If you look at his last interviews on YouTube, you can actually Google Shah, uh, you know, last interviews uh, before going to exile. Uh, it tells uh, actually some Western countries they say, you cannot come to my country and rule my country anymore. You have to pay top money for an oil now. I think that was the reason they got rid of Shah Vivan. Well, they did it in the uh, late 50s, 60s as well, didn't they? There was a, like, coup. A, a coup. Yeah. Mossadegh was yeah. another guy. Yeah. But uh, obviously, American didn't want him to go yet. So they kept Shah in power. Right. Yeah. But yeah, Iranian knows exactly what's happening to Iran and 1979, it's, it's, we know that for a fact. So, but now the regime in Iran has to go. This is must. Regime change in Iran must because they're not Persians, they're not Iranians. So, this is what's happening. It's, it's you know, like, and, and yeah. it must be sad, you know, like, mm. obviously you've got family still there. Mm. You know, but it's mm. dis displaced a lot of people. I mean, mm. they're all over the world. Yeah, over know? six, seven million Iranians uh, escape. A lot of them in America, and if, uh, I'm not biased, but they are some of the most successful migrants. You yeah. know, in US, very as Trump says, they're very successful, and for a minority migrants, f f been there for forty years, a lot of you know, 
successful people here. Well, in Australia, there's only there's under thirty five thousand yeah. Iranian people. Yeah, uh, I think there's around thirty four. Yeah, a lot of uh, in, as, as mentioned before. I mean, talk, we spoke before uh, back in eighties when I came to Australia from Pakistan. A lot of Baha'is came. So Baha'i is a religion in Iran, uh, which, uh, you know, they have no rights uh, in in eyes of the regime. So they're not allowed to practice their religion. They're not allowed to have uh, meetings. They're not allowed to have their Baha'i schools. Because Baha'i kids, when they five, six years old, they go to Baha'i school. They get to know about different religion. They know to get about rights, this and that women rights, men's rights, equality of men and women. Very peaceful religion. My mom is Baha'i. But I don't have religion myself, but you know, I, I tell what's right in my eye. So Iranian regime, obviously, they, they don't give it. Actually, about 30, 40 Baha'i people in prison right now. You know, you can just have meeting in your house, like 10 people meeting, talking about your Baha'i religion. They can raid your house. They can, you can get arrested, go to prison. So, Hoss, do you think you'll ever see a regime change in, in Iran in the near future? I'm not a historian, but when you, when you read, you know, some, some, about some countries had dictator in their country. So, in, in, to my belief, no dictator lasts. You know, you look at Gaddafi in Libya, look at, you know, Yemen, you look at um, Egypt, uh, Hosni Mubarak, you know, so they all lasted 30, 40 years. And when people have enough, enough is enough. I think it's, it's time to Iran to go towards victory and freedom, which we had before. And I'm 100% positive and all Iranians positive that this is happening r- right now. So, yeah, I think before um, Trump uh, go for a second term, I think they want to sort out the Iranian regime. So that's why they, they send all the Navy and, uh, you know, bombers into Middle East. So they're ready for Iranians if, you know, obviously Iran's got, Iranian regime's got two options. Either come to negotiation table or they're going to get bombed. So you see something like mm. North Korea? Yeah, I believe so, but uh, I don't like the war. No one likes war. No. It's not good for the US, it's not good for Iran. Innocent people are gonna kill, we hate war. You know, I came from war countries, so it's not a good option. But uh, I believe, because when Iran-Iraq war was on, Iranian people were behind the regime. So we went to, you know, uh, we went fight, fought for the Ayatollahs because we, we thought, you know, they're going to bring us happiness and freedom and better life. But that was 40 years ago. But right now, if war happens, Iranian regime, Iranian people are going to attack the regime. So, and that's what Trump knows for a fact. Iranian people are not behind the Iranian regime. That's what I know. That's what we know. <laughs> so, and what um, are the Western mm. Iranians in foreign countries um, are they preparing for this event to eventuate? People, Iranian people? In, in Australia, US, yeah, Europe? Yeah, I mean, we can do more. We can do more. I mean, all, all, obviously they active on Facebook and Instagram and social media. But uh, I think it's up to Iranian people r- rise up and do something about their life. You know, Because there is no future with this regime. I mean, obviously, you're pretty politically active yeah. against this regime. Yeah. Do you ever see a time when you can go back to Iran, Persia? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to go back with my daughter. My daughter never, I mean, uh, never seen Iran. I'd love to go back, visit my dad. My, I mean, my dad lives in Iran at the moment. I've got brothers, sisters in Iran, you know. Uh, Iran is, you know... Iran is one beautiful country that you don't see like it any others you know it's very unique you know we have because it was a Persian empire before we have this so many different cultures so many different outfits the food you know languages you know and we all Persians but living in the same country you know we have 
Persian, Arab Persians, you know, you got Kurdish, we got Turkish, we got all these na nation under one roof, which call Iran. So, and I think Shah was one, one thing was like, look at Dubai. Dubai 40 years ago was desert. There was nothing in Dubai. Look what they've made up out of Dubai by tourism. Well, I was there 35 yeah. years ago yeah. in Dubai, and um, it, all it was there was there was this um, one road Bedouins everywhere. Yeah. There was a few camels, a yeah. few camels, but yeah. you know a few little um, yeah. houses built yeah. around. Yeah. The airport was just one little terminal, yeah. and everybody had to be bussed yeah. in. They it was a fantastic to the country. They have, they have, you they know, have. The um, Sheikh of Dubai, God bless him. You know, he's good by his people. Uh, Dubai people live in very comfortable life. You know, that was our king plan to bring tourism to Iran. I remember I was 10, we had Swedish, French, German, you know, all around Tehran cities, you know, in, you know, mini scared, you know, no problem. On the beaches, we had holiday homes. Oh, my auntie had a holiday home. So we used to go to um, north of Iran and we had tourists from everywhere. You know, that was 40 years ago. So, I mean, it's obviously, you know, like, you, you, we'll never see this mm. now with this regime there. But, uh, but uh, it's good you mentioned because right now, Iranian leaders, they, their children, their family, live in Sweden, live in Canada, US, uh, Melbourne, in Australia. They live a dream life. They're driving their Maserati, they're driving a Ferrari, they live in penthouses in England, in France, everywhere, in Switzerland, in you name it. But, and the, the children and their grandchildren, there's so many of them, they call them Aghazadeh, which means they, they were born from Ser. They, you know, they were born from senior people, you know. So that's what's happening. But in Iran right now, when they come to Iran, they they say uh, they show themselves very humble. Oh, just eat one 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 food, two food. You don't have to be lux. You don't have to have a luxury life, you know. But the kids living a beautiful life out of Iran, and Iranian knows now because they post their picture on Instagram. The children they post their, you know, videos on Facebook, and Iranian people see what's been happening. And that's with social media as well. It's yeah. it's actually close the world in mm. a lot closer it's a smaller world yeah anything that happens it's instantaneous yes it's, there's no filtering it can't be that's right sort of censored that's by right. the yeah. the authorities mm. um yeah it's, it's that's why 40 years on first 30 years iranian were regime were doing whatever they wanted to do so people had no voice for past 10 years because of the social media we get all this news coming from Iran, you know, what the regime is doing to the people in Iran. I mean, obviously, yeah. they can censor mm. so much, but they can't censor it all, can they? That's exactly right. So one of the leaders, Iranian leaders, uh, two days ago, he said, if war happens, we will cut off the social, social media completely in Iran. So all Instagram. Now they're doing it already. So this, when I was talking to my brother last night, he had cut off every five, two minutes, three minutes. So right. They have a system on the bus, buses in Iran, they go around, they actually uh, send radiation. There's a lot of people, a lot of cancer and a lot of heart attack in Iran in the young age because of all the radiation they do. And they think it's a North Korean system, they're selling it to Iranians. So they send radiation to the, around the neighborhood so cut off the internet, so you have problem with your internet oh. system. It's so it's sick. sick. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. So, so, I mean, you, um, living in Perth, you, you were obviously, with your um, obviously political views, mm. are you well known over here with your... I know a lot of Baha'i people, yeah. Which, because my ex-wife was Baha'i and we were still best friends. She's like a sister to me now. So I know them, beautiful people, lovely, you know. Um, I'm not as involved to the community as much. So uh, I was helping refugees and as I said, a lot of refugees are beautiful. They, they're living a good life now. They got a job. But not as much. I'm busy with work and yeah. 
I mean, living person, my life for a change. <laughs> I mean, your personal life, you know, it, yeah. that takes a lot of time as well. I mean, yeah. to, to actually be you know, socially active and politically active yeah. within the community it takes a lot of time yeah. and effort and energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, living yeah. in Perth, what, I mean, what do you do? If you to say you're, you're feeling a bit down, I mean, what, what sort of... My, my favourite thing in life is exercising. So I, I started exercising since I was five years old. I did gymnastics. I was a state champion back in Iran. As a gymnast, I went to a king's birthday party once. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And I met the king, queen, and prince. Then I started doing... Um, my, my dad said, oh, gymnastics is for the girls. And you got to do boxing. One day you're going to have wife. You're going to protect your wife. So my mom said, no boxing. And he said, okay, martial arts. So I did martial arts for 30 years. I was teaching in, in Australia. I was actually runner up in Australia in 2000. So I'm showing off at the moment. So to me, I always say to my friends, my daughter, just exercise, make your exercise your best friend. Your mentally, your physically, everything, you'll be fine. You know, what? that's what I do mostly. And what, is it, what was the martial arts you were doing? I did Kyokushin Kai, which is a Japanese full contact martial arts. So uh, yeah, um, it, was, it was good mentally. In Pakistan, during two years, as a 17 years old, 18 years old being there, I lost a lot of friends through drugs. So um, because, but thanks God, I think exercise helped me. So uh, when they were doing the drugs, I was running in the park. So yeah. that's, yeah. With exercise, I find it mm. doesn't. It not only gives yeah. you physical strength; it gives you yeah. mental strength. Yeah, and it keeps you young, makes you look good. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think exercising and uh, just be positive. I've got a, a very good friend diagnosed Parkinson's like uh, four years ago. Uh, he's now in, in wheelchair. He's. Uh, he can't go to toilets anymore. He can't feed himself anymore. He's in hospital right now. So uh, within three years, he was like you and I. Had a job, you know, exercising. He's overweight now. He can't walk. And uh, when I see him, I was seen once a week at least. So when I see him, every morning I get up, I say, thanks, God, thank you. I'm healthy. I can walk. I can go to toilet. I can drink my tea with my own hand. So I think you got to be thankful for what you have. Yeah, I think well, that's health, it. I mean, health is number one. No matter how bad you think life mm, is, there's yeah. always someone else worse yeah. off. And yeah. that's the way I always look at it. And, yeah. you know, and meeting new people, mm. you know, is mm. a beautiful thing. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. met over eight years ago. We've been yeah. good friends for so many yeah. years. And, mm. and that's the part of life I like, um, is meeting someone new every day. Yeah, and me too. We're lucky yeah. that we're in the industry yeah. that we we can meet new people every day. That's true. You um, obviously you've got a, a big network of friends, not just all Iranians. Yeah. So yeah. you you know, and you're quite a social type of person. Yeah. Obviously, um, mm. it's not all about just preserving your yeah. Iranian Persian background. No, it's, yeah. yeah, I've got friends from all over the world. You know. And some of the most beautiful people, I'm so lucky to know them. Yeah. Very lucky, yeah. And I, I live in one of the best countries in the world at the moment for 30 years. I'm thankful to Australia, took me in. And, you know, um, I mean, I had a comfortable life in Iran. My dad was comfortable, but Iranian situation in Iran, what it, where it is now, I could be in drug, I could be dead, I could, because I, I cannot shut my mouth. So I could be in prison, most most definitely, I think. That's what my friend says. So I'm in this country, you know, I'm grateful, you know, my kids can live a good life here, you know, freedom, you know, and you have your rights. You know, people say, oh, police is this, law is this. The only thing I don't like about Australia is a, a criminal punishment. I think it should get tougher, as all Australian knows better than me, you know. I was kink hitting. Uh, Northbridge. You were King Hit? Yeah, in uh, trying to help some guy. This is probably off the subject, but it came to my That's mind okay. about crime in Australia. So I was passing this restaurant, I saw three bouncers punching this young boy. I went to separate them. One of the 
Dance has punched me. I hit my head to the ground. End up in semi coma in uh, Royal Perth Hospital. So when I woke up, uh, I lost. I realized I lost my sense of smell and taste. So I got no sense of smell for taste for the rest of my life. So I miss uh, mostly KFC and uh, <laughs> Whopper. Yeah, <laughs> I miss bacon deluxe burger. You know, it was KFC and all that pizza, garlic, beer, all that. You know, so. So I was, I'm suffering with this and 11 years or 10 years. What upsets me, the guy, King hit me. He went, he took, he took, they took him to the police uh, interviewing and they let him go. And he was free for a year before we went back to court. And the prosecutor contacted me, said, this guy has done it to so many people, but people are scared of him. Please do it. I said, my friend, I'm from Iran. I came from war zone. Trust me, I don't scare of no one. So I went back to court, uh, three days court hearing, hearing, and he got three years prison. After three years, I got a letter after a after year and a half, less than that. I got a letter from uh, court here. Mr. Daniel something uh, got released because of good behavior. And please do not contact him. I said, are you kidding me? Please give me his address. I'll contact him. <laughs> I swear to God, it just upsets me why the guy didn't even serve his uh, sentence. So what do you? What, what's, what type of sentencing do you think that should be imposed here? I think, first of all, he should be locked up the day he king hit me, you know, because I'm sure he's done it to other people during that 12 months he was free. He could... He could escape the country. Maybe, maybe they kept his passport or whatever. But he was free, mm. you know. In 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 U.S., um, you know, you, you hit someone, you go to prison. They won't let you out for twelve months. Then clearly you come back to the court, you know. I mean, I do agree. I mean, mm. the the Westminster system of governance and even yeah. the penal codes are something to be desired. Um, mm. they're, they're not tough enough. The no. day, there's no. Um, basically, there's no incentive not to commit a crime. Yeah. Because the crimes are so, you know, I mean, sorry, the the laws are so lax, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But um, I but feel we're lucky. Australia's, you know, of of, of travel internationally, and I see different nationalities. We are lucky. Australians are the, one of the most friendliest nation. Yeah. I believe that strongly, you know. I, I mean, I'm not saying other nations not, you know, but there is less trust in other countries, unless you go to Canada. Canada is still better than other countries. It's cold version of Australia, that's what I call it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's Australia in freezer. <laughs> but, I mean, in Australia, you, you walk in Perth, you know, you know, you say to hello to people and, you know, drinking beer at the bar, you say hello, people hello back. People smiling because they're comfortable. They have freedom. They have uh, everyone's tummy is full. Everyone's got can afford to pay the rent. They can afford to buy a car. You know, it's a lucky country. I don't. Yeah. I sort of agree with you there. Yeah. I think people don't realise yeah. how good they have it in countries like Australia. Yeah. One thing I like about Australia, army should be compulsory, boy and girls. Six months, eight months, not two years, nine months, 12 months. Compulsory to teach kids here this discipline, you know, um, respect. And, you know, I think it's good for a country in the long term. All those countries that do have army compulsory, like, you know, Iran, Israel, Saudi, all those countries, the kids are more advanced mentally. Singapore. Singapore. I think Australia is great. We should keep it like this even better. And I think one thing, and I, I talk to a lot of Aussies as soon as I say that, I said that's fantastic. I think that should be. I think done. a lot of people agree with that. Yeah. No, even sure. three months. I mean, six months. You yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think that's long enough. I, I yeah. think you should learn the basics, then give two years to yeah. your country. Um, yeah. I just believe it give mm. a bit of nationhood mm. to people. A bit, a bit, I'm being mm. um, passionate about the country. Mm, you know, yeah. like you look at the Kurds and the Armenians. Mm. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but I'm just trying to, you know, in, in capture mm. those two um, 
groups of people. Yeah, should, yeah. Nationhood mm. is important to them. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of religions within the Armenian um, people and yes. the, the Kurds. Yes. Yeah. What keeps them and gels mm. them together is nationhood. They're proud. Yes. You know, they're Very proud. Much. And, and they'll yeah. stand up. Mm. Um, you know, and you can Yazidis. Exactly. They just amazing women. The women are I call them lioness, Persian lioness, because mm. originally they Persians. So Kurdish originally they all Persians. So they fought ISIS. Twelve, thirteen years old kids, you know, they were fighting. I was following them nonstop and I was crying every day, looking at these people getting killed, chopped by a bunch of evils. ISIS, yeah. Exactly. I mean the Kurdish yeah. people the proudest and they've been let down that many times and yet mm. they're that loyal yes yeah. to themselves mm. but even to mm. to the people that have let them down yes yeah. you know and mm. they should mm. be you know I mean nationhood to them is very very important and yeah. you know if we can make mm. as a West you know like to influence yes to to, to bring about change so they have nationhood mm. so they have Kurdistan or whatever you want to call it yeah you know the Armenians, they mm. were persecuted by the Ottoman Empire. Very much, you know? yeah. You know, so mm. it's very important, I think, mm. to recognise nationhood, mm. you, know, yeah. you know. They're doing it with, I mean, look at Scotland, they want their own identity, identity to, yeah. to be separated, yeah. you know, to be an in, uh, independent country. Yeah. And yet they want to join the EU when they leave the UK, yeah. so that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But yeah. I... Um, yeah, it's like the Iranian people, mm. I really hope yeah. uh, in the near future. Thank you. Yeah. That that mm. there is the hope of nationhood for all Iranians. There will be some for all, not yeah. just a, a certain sect. Yeah. For all, you yeah. know, and I think it's very, very important. Mm. A lot of people. I mean, I love, I respect all the religions, because my dad, grown up as Muslim, I grew up. I used to go to mosque. Uh, you know, I was uh, I used to do azan, which is the uh, singing before you know when they praying you sing. So I used to do loud azan in the mosque in front of two three hundred people. So uh, I'm not disrespecting anything, but I think a lot of Iranians going back to the original roots, which is the Russian Parsis, and I heard a lot of and I see a lot of uh, Iranians uh, uh, getting interest into Baha'i faith. Uh, Christians, uh, they be, they changing, they they running away from Islam, which is you know you know I'm sure deep down you know no religion says kill people you know, but I think uh, a lot of in future a lot of Iranians come out of uh, yeah current religion religion in Iran, that's been happening right now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah. What what does the future hold for Hassan? Of oh, mommy? Yeah. Uh, I love to see regime change. Every morning I get up. Every time I finish work, I check the news on my mobile. Yeah. I want to go back to my country. You do. Yeah. Very passionate. Yeah. Very. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good man. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. yeah. I want to go back to Iran. I want to see my dad before he dies. I want to. You know, see, get all my brothers, sisters, come. Yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah. No, it's good. Mm. It's I, I can I can feel you know I can feel your passion, you know, and uh, it's very important that you keep up this fight. Mm -hmm. You know because yeah, so many people. I haven't seen my birth, my family's birthday, weddings. I lost auntie's uncle never had had the chance to go to a funeral you know it's not only me it's about six million iranians you know and I iranians in iran suffering at the moment mm. you know they, yeah it's no good but i'm sure it's changing we can go back i want to go back to you kiss will. iranian land yeah I love Australia, don't get me wrong, you know. I know. But I want to see my high school, I want to see. You know, it's good, yeah. Just, um... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's important. It's, and it's important for your daughter as well. Yeah. You know, because she needs to go and see... Yeah. ...her roots. It's like my kids. Mm. I mean, they were born here. 
um, going back to the UK. They go back to see their ancestry. Yeah. You know, to see wh- yeah. where it come, where they come from. You yeah. know, originally. You know, and yeah. uh, it's important, and everybody should have that freedom. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's plain and simple. The, the I mean, freedom. 2019. Of, I cannot believe some idiots still like to rule your life, cover your hair. Uh, you know, you cannot marry Christian because you're Muslim. In Iran, you convert religion; they hang you. You know, why should be like that? If, if uh, Australian goes to Saudi, you can, you're not allowed to have Bible on you. Mm. You're not allowed to preach someone about Jesus. I'm not preaching, preaching Jesus or nobody, but they, you come here from other country. You can have your temple. You can uh, swear at president. You can do say, you know, F Morrison, F, you know, these and that, but it should be. Even I think it's there is no balance. Exactly. You know, if if you're not allowed to say anything in the country, then not allowed to do it here. Simple as that. Exactly. I just you know. I, I agree. I just um, yeah. you know they talk about you know open borders and all that, but yeah. I think a lot of the time they don't want open borders. Yeah. You know, even in the West. No, they don't. Yeah. There's a lot of people in those countries they get brainwashed. You know, with heaven, hell, business, you know. And a lot of, I believe, religion is more powerful than atomic bomb. You know, uh, you, you, I'll pay you $10 billion, I'll say, chop your hands off, you won't do it. But I'll brainwash you with religion, you can put bomb on yourself and destroy yourself and 2,000 people. Yeah, it's an it's ancient... a fantastic way to... It's, it was basically, yeah. it's, it's an old system yeah. of... Governance, isn't it? And yeah. rules. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, and religion is geographical. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's by accident that you yeah. become a Muslim, you become a Christian. Yeah. Because where you were born. Yeah. And I always say, if you know how you turn off your light yeah. two hours a year and say, save the planet, just leave without religion for two weeks in the world. Just tell everyone, no religion this week. See, Everyone is going to, I think, be nicer and live in harmony. Nothing against religion. You can have your religion. Exactly. In your heart, in your home, pray in your home, you know, love your God, whoever you call it. But don't come and preach it on me. Don't come and, you know. It should be a freedom of choice. Yeah. You know, we are humans. We're smart now. We should know. I mean, yeah. well, sad, there's a lot of yeah. intelligent people still stuck in. Do, mate, yeah. The, with religion. I'm, I was born. And Chris, uh, christened uh, an Anglican, yeah. the Church of England, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not practicing. Yeah. Um, to be, to be honest with you, I'm not even religious. Yeah. Um, and I don't, with my kids, instill any religion. That's up to them. Yeah. So if they want to become religious, that's that's yeah. their choice. Mm. I'm not going to instill my belief. Yeah. On the kids, you know. We should be modern enough to know that, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's been good talking to you. Yeah, right? thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for your hospitality. <laughs> I hope you're welcome. I just gave you one chocolate <laughs> and a, two coffees so far. But uh, I'll, I hope yeah. next next interview in very, very soon, within a few months or weeks maybe, come back and we talk about celebration in Iran. You and I can go to Iran and celebrate. I'd love that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks God very much. Man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.